position. Pull those fingertips back.
Good afternoon. I will now call the November 10th, 2021 San Diego County Board of Supervisors special meeting to order. Uh, Supervisor Desmond is not present today as he's traveling on a pre-planned -pre trip. I want to note that for the record. Uh, and with that, I'll ask the clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Before I call the roll, I would like to know for the record that all supervisors are participating via teleconference. As such, all votes will be handled by a roll call vote. With that, I will now call the roll. Supervisor Anderson. Here. Supervisor Lawson Reamer. Here. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas here. Chair Fletcher. Fletcher here. We have a quorum. We only have one item for discussion today. Uh, this is going to be uh, agenda item number one, uh, a change consideration to change the rules and policies and procedures brought forward by myself uh, and Vice Chair Vargas. During the last several board meetings, uh, there's become an increasing trend of public comment periods where people are uh, making vulgar, profane, uh, racist, hostile type uh, comments and environments. Uh, we welcome dissent uh, at the County of San Diego. Uh, we welcome disagreement. Uh, we welcome individuals coming down and making our democracy stronger uh, by expressing contrary point of views. But we have an obligation to protect the county employees uh, who are part of our system here and not allow a hostile uh, workplace environment uh, to be developed. And so the actions that we're taking today are actions designed to facilitate the ability for individuals to speak either in support or in opposition of an item uh, and ensure that their voices are heard. Uh, we also want to work again to make sure that we don't have a hostile environment where racist and profane behavior uh, disrupts and, uh, and threatens our ability uh, to, uh, to carry out the business before us. Uh, so many individuals have, have reached out over, over the course of the last few months as this situation has unfolded uh, to really talk about their desire to participate in their meetings, but their reluctance to because uh, of what they feel to be an unsafe environment. A number of individuals who are, who are opposed to actions uh, that the board is taking have said that their ability to make legitimate points, contrary points, uh, are overshadowed or distracted uh, by so much of what's happening. And so we come before us today, uh, along with Vice Chair Vargas, uh, to bring some changes around uh, how we conduct our board meetings. Uh, everyone will always and forever have the First Amendment right to speak at the board meeting. Uh, I know we will hear people say this will take away the right. The same people who are going to say that at this meeting will be at our next meeting speaking freely. They'll be at the meeting after that speaking freely. They'll be at the meeting after that speaking freely. The right to dissent, disagree, uh, express grievances is a proper functioning of local government and will forever remain a part of local government. Uh, but we think that it is important and imperative in order to ensure a safe environment, uh, both for the public and our workers, and to allow the effective execution of the people's business, that we modify uh, our rules and procedures and bring us consistent with other jurisdictions. The things that we are adopting today are items that are in place in other cities and counties throughout California. Um, and so what we are doing is adopting a code of civil discourse uh, developed by the N National Conflict Resolution Center, uh, adopting more stringent positions against harassment and abuse, including a reading of the statement on the county's policy regarding discrimination and harassment into the record uh, as a part of it, prohibiting disruptive conduct when it is disruptive, uh, threatening language, clapping, stomping of feet, and other things which are disruptive acts that interrupt the, the proper proceedings of the meeting, uh, implementing new parameters around group presentations. Uh, public comment will remain the standard two minutes, but it may be limited to one minute per individual uh, if there are more than 10 individuals wishing to comment. Uh, again, this brings us in line with countless other jurisdictions, but it just gives us the option uh, to do that for speakers, both in support and opposition. It will be applied consistently uh, in that manner. And we're doing some reform or changes to the consent calendar uh, ahead of time for uh, routine administrative items, again, with supervisors always having the ability to remove any item uh, from the consent calendar. Uh, we'll codify the allowance of remote participation by the public. Um, and make some changes surrounding technology. Now we uh, have moved quickly and the reason that we've had to move quickly is in order to uh, take some type of action to uh, allow our employees to be comfortable and safe when we return uh, to our regular meetings in the chambers uh, at our next regularly scheduled Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, but I know when you move quickly, some folks uh, will have concerns. We are committed moving forward to working with groups uh, that have ideas down the road for how we can 
modify or change or any of that. Our commitment to allowing free speech is there. It will always be a part of county government. Individuals will always be free to come down and criticize, question, support, dissent, disagree. Uh, none of that will change, uh, but we think that these are appropriate steps, again, modeled on other jurisdictions throughout California, uh, to align our rules and procedures uh, to the environment in which we operate today. Uh, with that, let me go to, I'll make a uh, motion to approve, and uh, let me go to uh, Vice Chair Vargas. Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. You know, it's really unfortunate uh, that we're here under these circumstances, but I'm really hopeful that our actions today are going to allow for a more welcoming environment for public discourse at our county meetings. Uh, I am committed to transparency, accountability, and community input, and I strongly believe that as a governing body, we have a responsibility to make sure that our employees feel safe and free to do their jobs without being intimidated or harassed. I have to say that, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this because, um, you know, over the couple of last few months during our public comments, uh, I've been very concerned of what, what I've seen. And, you know, I come from the from the world of being an organizer and an advocate. And so, so many times I came before the board and never once uh, did I uh, head in that direction where I was disruptive or racist or made any of those types of comments. And so for me, I think that today what we're doing is is we're trying to make sure that we uh, allow for everyone to have access and to have the opportunity to bring their points across. I think uh, what has happened in our chambers has really deterred so many folks from engaging in public discourse, discourse for fear of harassment. You know, I absolutely am a strong advocate for freedom of speech and, and I have fought hard throughout the years so that our community has a voice throughout San Diego County, right? And, and I will emphasize and continue to say that, you know, hate speech and racism have absolutely no place in our public institutions. I do believe that our democracy is stronger when divergent uh, voices and different vo viewpoints are part of our conversation. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to uh, have different perspectives. You know, I often talk about representation matters and me being on this board means that I have a different perspective, different lens, et cetera. And so I absolutely welcome differences of opinion and perspectives. And um, I do believe that it's our responsibility to make sure that every one of our meetings is a safe place uh, for voicing um, everyone's opinion. Uh, but I really want us to figure out a way to bring back decency, kindness, and respect to our county meetings. And I also want to make sure it's clear that we're not infringing our freedom of speech, that we are creating a more welcoming environment for civil discourse and making it more accessible to those that have a trouble having access to the meetings. And so I want to second your motion. And if you uh, indulge me for just one minute, I do want to mention something in Spanish because um, I quiero nomás enfatizar para las comunidades habla hispana que para mí ha sido muy importante este, que nuestras comunidades participen en, en nuestras juntas de, de, los, de los miembros de la Junta de Supervisores. En los últimos meses hemos visto unas cosas que, que yo jamás pensé en mi vida que las iba a ver, un discurso de odio y ataques racistas en contra de nuestros trabajadores y nuestras instituciones públicas. Y creo yo que nuestra democracia tiene que ser más fuerte. Esta opinión y perspectivas diferentes Eso es importante que la gente las tenga, pero tenemos una responsabilidad nosotros como supervisores de recuperar la decencia y el respeto de nuestras juntas. Esta, esta carta que estamos presentando no va a limitar a nuestras comunidades, al contrario, va a dar la oportunidad que exista un discurso civil en donde tengamos una oportunidad de hacer presentaciones, de dar su perspectiva, si no tienen acceso a tecnología, buscar una manera que la gente lo pueda tener. Así que, Quiero enfatizar que no estamos infringiendo la libertad de expresión de ninguna persona, sino que estamos haciendo es creando un mejor espacio para el diálogo y a la vez haciéndolo con más accesibilidad a la comunidad. Cualquier persona que tenga alguna, no sé, que quiera, tenga ideas o información de cómo podemos hacer nuestra democracia mucho más este, accesible en nuestras comunidades, estoy a sus órdenes. And so with that, I am very proud to talk at this board letter with you, Chair Fletcher, and I firmly stand against racist and violent verbal aggression and behavior. And I strongly urge my colleagues to support this action. Thank you, Vice Chair. Is that a second? That's a second. Yes, a second. Um, well, before we go to public comment, we should ask any other board members if they want to make any introductory comments. Uh, if not, we will hear from the public and then come back to the board. Supervisor Austin Reimer? Yes, I'd love to say a few words. Um, so first of all, I just want to thank my colleagues for bringing this uh, for today. I've been on both sides of the podium, so to speak. I've been a community organizer, an advocate, a leader of protest movements, 
in a sense, my entire life until I won this election just uh, a year ago was on the other side of the podium, was as a public commentator. So I, at a very fundamental level, understand and value the importance of free speech. I am open and welcome criticism and opposition and feedback. And now that I'm on this side of the conversation, I hold myself to the same standards I held those who I once protested against. The purpose of public meetings is to have a civil exchange of ideas for our residents to be able to voice views and for this board to be able to consider views. And at the end of the day, for us to balance competing vo viewpoints that we hear out of community events, in our email, in the ballot box, and at these meetings. But unfortunately, our public hearings have turned into forums for bullying and racist comments. And we lose something incredibly precious in our community when these public spaces become platforms for hate. Our county has chosen to center itself on racial justice and equity and inclusion. But as a result of the comments made at these hearings, many in our community no longer are able to participate in the public discourse, are no longer able to make their views for heard, no longer have their, a voice because they no longer feel safe accessing this vital public forum to make their voices heard, which robs hundreds of thousands of people entry point to our democratic process and holds them hostage to a very small few of bullies. Free speech is vital, but it does not exist when people cannot participate. So I absolutely stand with our county employees who have not felt safe and with San Diego's Black, Indigenous, and people of color who must feel safe to participate at this public forum, we cannot receive full community input if people in our community don't feel like they can show up. And when we are not receiving full community input, we cannot make the best decisions on behalf of our community. So the, with that, I um, just again want to thank my colleagues for bringing this forward. I understand that we will be continuing to take feedback, feedback and input um, to continue to improve and refine uh, these rules, uh, recognizing that we had to move quickly to bring these forward. And I'm sure we will continue to iterate and improve with additional stakeholder input in the coming days and weeks. Um, and I'm looking forward to that input process. And um, frankly, I'm looking forward to establishing a more civil platform for an exchange of ideas in our county. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Lawson Reamer. Um, not seeing any additional requests, let me ask the clerk to please call forward our public speakers today. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We have 37 total requests to speak by phone. I'll also note for the record that we received 76 e-comments on this item, nine in favor, six in opposition, and four neutral. Any members of the public that requested to speak on this item by phone, please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will hear from those that requested to speak by phone. We'll be calling speakers by the last four digits of their phone number. You will hear notification that your call has been unmuted. You will then need to press star six to unmute your phone. We'll ask you to please state your name for the audio record and you'll have two minutes to address the board. I'll remind the callers that they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. We'll begin with the first caller. Last four digits are nine, six, six, seven, nine, six, six, seven. Please press star six to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? This is Supervisor Victor Manuel Perez. We can, please proceed, thank you. Thank you. I'm a county supervisor for Riverside County and president of the Latino Caucus, California counties. And I wanna commend San Diego County, specifically Chairman Nathan Fletcher and Vice Chairwoman Nora Vargas and what you're doing today as a model for the rest of the state of California and approving amendments to the Board of Supervisors Rules of Procedures and to adopt a resolution entitled Amending the Rules of Procedure of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. With that said, as president of the Latino Caucus of California Counties, I was disheartened to hear the bigoted comments made on November 2nd against our Latino Caucus member, Supervisor Nora Vargas, and her colleagues on the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. I am disappointed that comments of this nature were made in a public hearing. 
Unfortunately, some people still make openly racist, misogynistic, homophobic, and threatening comments in these public settings. As county supervisors, we must protect freedom of speech without compromising respectful dialogue and order. We all have the right to agree or disagree, make suggestions, and show our support or dislikes. But if the sole purpose of making commentaries to disrupt our democratic process and wreak havoc, then one can only surmise that the intent is harmful and compromises public safety. Supervisor Nora Vargas and the entire San Diego County Board of Supervisors deserve our wholehearted support for taking the steps necessary to make adjustments to policies and procedures so that this breach of public safety could never happen again. We applaud you for taking a stand against this injustice because free speech does not mean hate speech. Our caucus supports the efforts of Chairman Nathan Fletcher and Vice Chairwoman Nora Vargas to approve these amendments to the Board of Supervisors Rules of Procedure and to adopt a resolution entitled Amending the Rules of Procedure of the Samuel County Board of Supervisors. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 2151. 2151, please press star six. Thank you, Chairman Fletcher. My name is Kathy Lembo, and I am the CEO of SBCF an organization of over 500 dedicated employees working to improve the lives of individual children and families. I was appalled at the racist, hate-filled speech that has grown increasingly more aggressive at the board meetings over the past few months. Last week's meeting was a breaking point for many of us in the community, so we organized the letter before you today. That letter supports your and Vice Chair Vargas's proposed rule changes and more importantly, denounces hate speech in any form. The list of signatories on the letter is nearly 100 people deep, and it can, can, continues to grow every hour with leaders from business, labor, higher education, and nonprofit. We as the leaders of San Diego will not tolerate the actions of a few last week. And we are here to support you in conducting the business of the county in an equitable and inclusive way that allows all people to speak their truth in a safe environment that is devoid of hate and threat. We are collectively saying, not on our watch. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller is 3009. 3009. Please press star six to unmute. Good afternoon. My name is Bridget Browning. I am the secretary treasurer of the San Diego and Imperial County Labor Council, and we proudly rep represent nearly 300,000 working families and over 130 different labor organizations. Our members watched with horror along with the public as individuals bent their public comments attacking supervisors and ultimately using racist remarks against county staff. Unions fight every day to ensure that our workers are treated with dignity, respect, and safety. And no one should come to work and face that type of harassment and hate. Just as much as anyone, we believe people deserve a voice in their workplace and in the process of governing. But hate speech is not conducive to good governance. We have been advocated to this body for decades, and rules have always been in place to maintain decorum and mutual respect, regardless of our, of our divergent viewpoints. It has been disheartening and, in fact, a deterrent for our working families to be part of the important work occurring here. It has become clear that these meetings have devolved into a place where our members do not feel safe. Racist, misogynistic, homophobic, and threatening comments have no place in the workplace or in our general discourse. I urge you all to support Chair Fletcher and Vice Chair Vargas's support for the proposed changes to the Board of Supervisors' rule of, rule of procedure and our opposition to the racist and hateful comments given by members of the public. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller is 3878. 3878, please press star six. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? We can, please proceed. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ellen Nash. Um, and uh, I currently serve as the chair of the Leon Williams San Diego County Human Relations Commission. And I also serve as chair of the San Diego chapter of the Black American Political Association of California. And um, I am here on this call on behalf of both entities. And we stand with Vice Chair 
and chair of the board in their strong actions to denounce the blatant racist comments and threatening language that came from members of the public that were directed to our public health officer, Dr. Wilma Wooten, and to the board of supervisors. We specifically want to thank Vice Chair Vargas for her strong in the moment and decisive actions to shut down those attacks. We also thank the board for moving to take quick actions through policy at this meeting today. We also want to take time to thank and acknowledge Dr. Wooten for her steadfast and thankless service. We know this is not the first time she has heard these attacks and yet she stands firm in her words and actions. We thank you and hate that you suffer through these types of attacks know that we stand with you. We also stand with the board on these changes to ensure safety and decorum in these board meetings. We see this as leadership that should be replicated across the region. The commission joins the CAO, Board of Supervisors, and many others in denouncing all forms of hate, and we steadfastly support those harmed by racism and violence. As Martin Luther King's words say, I have decided to Stick with love. Hate is too great, too great a burden to bear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is 7977. 7977. Please press star six to unmute. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, my name is Mark Cafferty and I'm the President and CEO of the San Diego Regional Economic Development Corporation. I'm actually happy to be here today um, to add to the chorus of voices, commending Chairman Fletcher and Vice Chair Vargas for bringing this item forward today. At the EDC, we represent over 200 businesses in the region who invest in our organization and they employ more than 140,000 workers. Full disclosure, we partner with virtually every office at the, the County um, Board of Supervisors and Supervisor Desmond serves on our board of directors representing the uh, County Board of Supervisors. And again, we're here to speak in support of this item today and speak in, in support of the National Conflict Resolution Center being an entity that has been brought in to help with this item. I know that I speak um, having known many of the supervisors for a long time for all of them when I, when I know that they hold disagreement and public debate to be a sacred part of the work that they do and a critical part of the ongoing dialogue with our community, but there is no place for racism and hateful and hateful speech and intimidating and violent language um, like we have heard over the last few weeks. It has been a difficult time for everyone. And I know it's been a difficult time for people in public service. I wanna echo the comments made about the dignity and grace of Dr. Wilma Wooten. And I also wanna echo the compliment to all of our supervisors who brought this item forward today and again, happy to be here as someone representing a business and trade association, but also happy to be here as a citizen, a husband, and a father in this community when I look to Chairman Fletcher and Vice Chair Vargas and say thank you for bringing this item forward, and you have my and our full support in, in making the appropriate policies and procedures and the changes that you need to make sure that we avoid the kinds of issues that we encountered um, at the last Board of Supervisors meeting and many before then. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 8051-8051. Please press star six. Eight zero five one. we see you've unmuted. You might need to unmute your device. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hello, this is Shane Harris, the president and founder of the People's Association of Justice Advocates. Last week, San Diego County Public Health Officer, Dr. Wilma Wooten, was, who is not an elected official, was racially assaulted over public comments when she was called an Aunt Jemima. Now, I know that Chair Fletcher uh, and some of our board members may not know the history of the racial assault that Dr. Woman, Wilt, Wilma Wooten took and the trauma connected to that statement. But I want it to be very clear that what took place should never take place again. The comments that were made toward Chair Fletcher, Vice Chair Vargas, Supervisor Raymer, and others were wrong. But 
the statement took a different turn. The meeting took a different turn when racial assault that took us back to a time of 1860 where a mammy was seen as an aunt your mama was seen as a mammy who took care of the slave master's children. This history brings us to a time in this country that we believe or have thought that we have gotten away from. I want to commend Vice Chair Vargas, who took immediate leadership and throughout this situation had took immediate leadership, not just to call it out, not just to say it's hate, but to call it racism and to say that there must be a standard in civil discourse that must take place. I want to thank Chair Fletcher and others for following the vice chair on this initiative. Last week, my office, following the racial attack, proposed a policy, racial integrity at public meetings. I am happy to see that the National Conflict Resolution Center will be assisting in some of their efforts will thank be a part. You. Thank you. Our next speaker is 5011, 5011. Please press star six to unmute. Five zero one one. We'll come back. Next caller four nine seven eight. Four nine seven eight. Please press star six to unmute. Good afternoon. This is Richard Goulden. I want to thank everybody who has called in thus far for your words. I will remind you all, if we would have eliminated and greatly suppressed the COVID with personal behavior and local government programs, we would not be having this debate at this time. Uh, I am in favor of modifying the rules to make it fair for all people who want to speak in support of the COVID response. There should not be a public comment tax put on those people. Group presenters should not have unfair advantages over individual presenters. If individual presenters get to speak for two minutes, so should group presenters, not nine minutes and not even four minutes. Time limits should apply if there are more than 10 speakers on one side of an issue, but everybody else should still get their two minutes. There also should be no unvaccinated, unmasked in-person commenters as that is a COVID precaution to protect the county workers. I want to protect their rights to speech so they can do call-ins just like everybody else. I urge you all to approve these modifications and make them even stronger. Thank you, Dr. Wooten. Thank you, Supervisor Fletcher, Nora Vargas, and Lawson Reamer. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 4355, 4355. Please press star six. Four three five five. We'll come back. Next caller one zero three one one zero three one. Please press star six to unmute. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Castle. I'm president and CEO of the Lakeside Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the hundreds of business owners in Lakeside, I respectfully ask the board of supervisors to not make some of the proposed changes to your rules of procedures. I support the, re the board reducing and modifying hateful and racist comments from being made, but I oppose reducing public comment to one minute. Allowing a few bad apples reduce the rights of your constituents to voice their opinion is not in the best interest of San Diego County and gives them way too much power. I challenge you to try to limit your own comments on important issues to one minute. One minute. It's virtually impossible to fully express concerns or support for an issue in that time frame. Our voice is just as important as your own. In fact, I would argue it's more important. It is your job as an elected official to listen and act accordingly for those whom you represent. Reducing our rights as citizens to speak does not follow your own agenda of being transparent nor equitable. Again, do not allow a small handful of antagonists ruin the democracy for the rest of us. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our next caller is 7207, 7207. Please press star six. 7207. Seven two zero seven. We we see you've unmuted. Might need to unmute your device. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. My name is Christina, and I oppose this change. Um, I agree with the last speaker. I disagree with the statements made. It was very wrong. But despite um, that, we're asking you to listen to the fifty-seven other people that spoke. Um, or more. I mean, one person was very out of line. Or, but despite the actions of some people, why don't you listen to all the people and their concerns? You only focused on that one person. You didn't focus on the speech of everybody else. Um, who was asking me to please stop the vaccination mandate. Um, I think this is mainly about control. I oppose this change. I ask to keep democracy um, to the voice of many and allow us to speak. I mean, never again should we let something like the Holocaust happen and the Nazis wanted the Germans to support their Nazi dictatorship and believe in Nazi ideas for their common good. And to accomplish that goal, they try to control forms of communication through censorship and propaganda. When the Nazis came to power in 1933, a German constitution guaranteed freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Through decrees and laws, the Nazis abolished these civil rights and destroyed German democracy. So let never let the Holocaust happen again. Protect human rights. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 1415. 1415. Please press star six. One four one five. Welcome back. Next, oh, one four one. Hello. Hello. Please proceed. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Paul Hinton. Good afternoon, San Diego. The changes in this proposal that are supposed to quote protect freedom of speech and promote equitable public engagement protect neither free speech nor equitable public engagement. In-person attendance and participation at the special Board of Supervisors meeting is being restricted arbitrarily and unconstitutionally. The other changes in the proposal could be handled under the Board's Rule 10, which is, um, you know, Robert's Rules and Order are supposed to handle everything else that's not under another rule. But I don't like hateful speech. But frankly, if the few unruly speakers had been properly handled, this proposal would probably be unnecessary. It is proposed that items on the consent calendar that are routine items chosen by the chief administrative officer will have no discussion unless a supervisor or herself requests. And the items will be voted on as a unit. There is no public speaking allowed on these items. That is totally undemocratic. It is also proposed that if there are more than 10 speakers on an item, the time to speak is reduced to one minute, and apparently there are no group presentations on most items. This means that the speakers will have less time or no time to develop or explain their remarks, and good suggestions or solutions could be unheard or rejected simply because there isn't enough time to present them coherently. Thank you. Next caller is 2899, 2899. Please press star six to unmute. Hello, Andrew. Hi, this is Mary Davis. It is a sad day when one rogue individual ruins something for everyone else. It is even sadder when elected representatives use that one rogue individual as political cover 
to quash dissent and free speech for the rest of the peaceful, respectful, and vast majority of speakers simply because you do not like the message. The actions of Mr. Robo were absolutely reprehensible, but that should not give carte blanche power to supervisors to reduce time for respectful speakers, nor to cancel group presentations. Your efforts today to punish all for the acts of one are again, vast overreach. You continue to come up with new and creative ways to try to silence our voices, but still like air, we rise. Also seizing upon this moment of suppressive power may prove to be a double-edged sword for you as any of your preferred groups will now be subject to these same limits. We will be watching to ensure that happens and that quote exceptions are not made for the pet groups you favor. You can try to put a basket over a lamp, but it continues to shine. All that you try to hide will be disclosed and one day brought to light. Lastly, the supervisors need to lead by example. If you don't want vulgar and profane diatribe in the meetings, then please don't sling it at we the people on social media. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller is 4253. I'm 4253, please press star six. 4253. We'll come back. Next caller is 5585. 5585, five. please press star six. This is Amy Reichert, a leader with Reopen San Diego. Hate speech and bullying has no place in San Diego. We categorically condemn the racist comments that came from one member of the public. The hate speech and the bullying and the abuse is coming from Chairman Nathan Fletcher. Nathan Fletcher repeatedly uses social media to call people unpatriotic and murderers. Hello? Can you hear me? The, yes, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm going to have to start again. I, I apologize. This is Amy Reichert, a leader with Reopen San Diego. Yes. Hate speech we, and bullying has no place in, we, in San Diego. Okay, we can hear you. Great. Did you want me to start over or did you want me to start from the middle? I'll start from the middle where you were. Thank you. Okay, great. Nathan Fletcher, if you are saying that you want the public to behave in a respectful way, then you must also treat the public in a respectful way. On social media, you called myself and my son an unpatriotic murderer. This is not right. Please don't take the high ground. By the way, having a virtual meeting to deny public access is the height of hypocrisy. On September 7th, Nora Vargas led a transparency committee, and this action, Nora, is the exact opposite of a transparent government. I want to remind the board that there was a landmark case, New York Times versus Sullivan, in 1964. The court explained that the First Amendment's protections had to be interpreted against the background of the United States' profound national commitment to the principle that debate on public issues should be uninhibited, robust, and wide open. And it may well include vehement, caustic, and sometimes unpleasantly sharp attacks on government and public officials. The court said that criticism of government and public officials was at the core of American rights to freedom of speech and freedom of the press. You have no right to decide that clapping is not appropriate. You have no right to decide what is deceptive and what is not. There was a gentleman called in. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Our next caller is 5011. 5011. Please press star six to unmute. Five zero one one. We'll come back. Next caller is two one five three. Two one five three. Please press star six to unmute. Hello. 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 This is Kelly McCormick. Hello. And along with many others. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. Okay. Good. Along with many others, I'm saddened by the lack of civil discourse we've seen at recent Board of Supervisor meetings, particularly last week. 
I recognize that change is needed to guard against abuses of the system and to prevent reprehensible comments such as those made at last week's meeting. And while non-agenda public comment allows people to address any topic they find important, I agree that speakers should not be allowed to diverge wildly off topic if they are speaking to an agenda item. The board should have the right to end off-topic diatribes. However, I ask that you reconsider the proposal to disallow members of the public to pull items from the consent calendar for individual consideration. The Union Tribune describes consent items as mundane matters, but this isn't always the case. There are times when consequential matters end up on consent, and if not pulled by members of the public, would have sailed through without adequate public input and board member discussion. I would also ask that you use sparingly the ability to um, cut time down to one minute and only do that when it's absolutely necessary um, because there are times when there really is more that the public needs to bring to the board's attention than they can say in one minute. I thank you for your consideration on this very, very important topic. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 5294. 5294. Please press star six to unmute. Five two nine four. We see you've unmuted. You might need to unmute your device. Five two nine four. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Can you hear me? Okay, Lana Cotton. Quoting from the Brown Act: Members of the public have broad constitutional rights to comment on any subject relating to the business of the governmental body. Any attempt to restrict the content of such speech must be narrowly tailored to effectuate a compelling state interest. Specifically, the courts found that policies that prohibited members of the public from criticizing school district employees were unconstitutional. These decisions found that prohibiting critical comments was a form of viewpoint discrimination and that such a prohibition promoted discussion artificially geared outward, promising and maintaining the status quo, thereby for for closing meaningful public dialogue. I have felt that the board has routinely predetermined what their positions will be before the meetings and the constituents are being ignored. Quoting again from the Brown Act, one should be mindful of the ultimate purposes of the act to provide the public with an opportunity to monitor and participate in the decision-making processes of boards and commissions. I question if there are regular serial meetings taking place before the public meetings because of how three of the members consistently argue and vote in a block. If so, this is against the Brown Act. Quoting again from the, from the Act, the purpose of the serial meeting prohibition is to prevent public bodies from circumventing the requirement for open and public deliberation of issues. If these communications are permitted to occur in private, a large part of the process by which members reach their decisions may have occurred outside the public eye. Under these circumstances, the public would be able only to witness a shorthand version of the deliberative process and its ability to monitor and contribute to the decision-making process would be curtailed. It's obvious that we're not involved in this process and you want it to remain so. However, we the people will not stand for business as usual. We have a right to Thank monitor. You. We are Thank you. Our next caller is 7400. 7400. Please press star six to unmute. Hey. Thank you. This is Seth from District 4. Um, I just want to point out something very important here. When you hear these neo Bolsheviks and commies using this fictitious term of hate speech, what they're really talking about is a 21st century rehash of Soviet area speech codes against counter revolutionary speech. Okay? Repeat that. This so called hate speech is a new, this is a rehash of. Soviet era speech codes against counter revolutionary speech. What they're trying to do is criminalize dissent. Okay? Now, if some of these people on the board have their feelings hurt because of comments, that's too bad. You're an adult. Look, if, if you wanted a safe space, go run back to your university. Okay? Your job is in politics. And if you can't handle the heat that your actions are creating and the blowback and the vitriol, 
then either stop you know, taking these reckless and destructive actions and abusing your power in office or resign. It's that simple. We don't need any of these new regulations. We don't need any of these new rules. This is a naked attempt to quash dissent. And if you don't like it, resign your jobs. That's it. Thank you. Our next caller is 8384. 8384. Please press star six to unmute. Robert Belkamp, one speaker from the 11 2 meeting used derogatory slurs towards a member of the board and a county employee. Such, such actions are deplorable and should not be tolerated. I did not hear what that individual said as he spoke after I gave my comments and departed the meeting. However, the bad actor sentiments and conduct do not reflect the values or message of peaceful protesters from the several community organizations that commented at these board meetings. It was something like 87 people who spoke meaningfully against and four that spoke in favor of item 11 last week with about equal e-comment. Yet you are using a 1% outlier event to clamp down on free speech for the law abiding remainder. This board is already ignoring the public as the board votes contrary to the significant majority of public input. Now you want to further disenfranchise dissenters on policy by, by limiting speaking time, there already exists a mechanism to shut down speakers across the line, enforced by Mr. Potter. When I was cut off seven seconds early for wandering off topic, I didn't like it, but I accepted it because these are rules and laws that we must all follow, required for a lawful assembly in a democracy. But if the board reverts to closed door expansion of powers to Chair Fletcher, this lacks transparency. It's putting the wolf in charge of guarding the hen house. These new rules allow the chair to silence opposition directed at him. While this governing body has been systematically passing ordinances to dismantle and change the foundation of our system of government, the county charter and procedural rules retain to the people the right to be heard for redress of grievances. Do not cross the line yourselves into dictatorship. You would have no authority over us if it hadn't been given from above. You are representatives, not masters. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 7125. 7125. Please press star six to unmute. Hello? Hello. Please proceed. Hi. Um, my name is Charles Bio. I oppose today's only agenda item. Um, this is an, an emergency meeting, not for the Board of Supervisors, but for we, the people. It's hard to see this agenda item as anything other than what it is a false flag operation whereby the actions of a useful idiot are being used to justify the further erosion of our First Amendment rights. Countless men and women have fought, bled, and died for the rights which are at stake today. And to, to even consider it, the points on this agenda is to dishonor their sacrifice. This effort to muzzle the public should stand out, should stand out as a red flag to everyone, regardless of anyone's feelings about current affairs. Our board supervisors are truly unable to see the intrinsic danger of today's agenda, agenda item, then I fear that they're either woefully inept or possess ulterior motives. Next caller is 5118. 5118, please press star six. Daniel Shmiavsky. This is not about the acts of one. There's no comparison to the Holocaust. This is not about Mr. Fletcher. The opposition is not being ignored. And please spare me, no Soviet mumbo jumbo. The words directed at Dr. Wooten were despicable and repulsive. Furthermore, the mandates are like a rising tide. They lift all ships. Now, let me continue. Free speech is not under attack. Incivility is under attack. And assimilation of aberrant behavior is under attack, which coincidentally transcends society. This is not a political issue. 
This is a societal issue. The mouse in boiling water will ultimately die by assimilation. We are one humanity. We are not living in the Middle Ages where one was granted higher social status predicated on their behavior, predicated on how they treated other people during the Middle Ages. Certainly, the assassination of Martin Luther King, his wife Coretta Scott King wrote my father, offering to meet him on Vietnam. I don't remember such despicable behavior even during Vietnam. We've gone too far. Thank you. The pendulum has swung too far. Thank you. Our next caller is 0190, 0190. Please press star six. Hello? Hello? Yes, my name is uh, William Teeter. I live in Encinitas. And while I support some of the changes of, to give the chair more power to handle outbursts of racial speech, I read through the document, and most of these changes have nothing to do with that. Uh, under 4A Bolegs 1, for example, uh, my introduction would consume, if there were more than 10 people speaking, my introduction to saying my name, that would consume one-sixth of the time I would be allocated to present my input on an issue. That's not enough time. Two minutes is short enough. There is absolutely no justification for reducing it to one minute. The board, if there's 11 people speaking, the board can't stand to spend 11 minutes listening to public input, more than 11 minutes. Uh, on 4E, uh, for example, it gives the chair the right if they're off topic to terminate them. Well, uh, there's two minutes. Certainly you can just listen to them for two minutes. And if you describe off topic anything the chair seems to disagree with, they'll say it's off topic and they'll lose what they're saying. Um, these rules will turn board meetings into a modern version of the gong show, if you're old enough to remember what the gong show was. Uh, and finally, I, I'll, they need to put in something about e-comments. Uh, you solicit these from people, but there's no requirement that the board members actually read them before they vote on an agenda item. So you're basically saying, throw them away, we're not gonna look at them, but go ahead and we solicit this input from the public, which we will absolutely do nothing to, on and we won't even read it. So you need to add something about what does the public expect to do when they take the time to write up an e-comment and it shouldn't be just nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 1859. 1859. Please press star six. Again, 1859. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Bob Cotton. I'm referring to California Government Code, Chapter 9, 54950. I quote, the people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. Unquote. I'm going to refer my next questions to Nathan Fletcher and Nora Vargas, since they are the ones that signed off on this proposal. You quote in your proposal, uh, there have been increases in regular meeting disruptions that have impacted the free speech rights of others. You go on to say the proposed changes to the rules of procedure are focused on ensuring that the board's business is conducted in an orderly fashion and that all have an equal opportunity to observe and participate in the proceedings. I have a question. How is anyone restricted from participation in these meetings? We have access by teleconference. We have access by e-comments. You say in your further, uh, further on, those communities that have been previously disconnected from the county civic process. You say words like diverse and equitable manner. How has anyone been restricted from 
these meetings, none. The impact, if you go on, the impact has shielded public participation due to intimidation and harassment and intimidation and harassment experienced when participating in person. There has been no such thing. You had one speaker go off the rails last week, 70 other speakers who were perfectly fine. So there is no restriction on anyone attending or contributing. Thank you. Our next caller is 4355. 4355. Please press star six to unmute. Good afternoon. My name is Neil Ortigara. I'm the Senior Director of Public Affairs at Planned Parenthood Fund of the Pacific Southwest. We support policies that promote a just society by challenging injustice, valuing diversity, and striving to achieve a world where all people have a right to equitable treatment and support for their human rights. Let's be clear. The reprehensible comments of last week did not happen in a vacuum but we're a boiling point following a pattern of behavior within the public discourse. And if we are to continue under the current rules, would have no mechanism to prevent it from happening again. Furthermore, the proposed changes do not violate the Brown Act and are actually reflective of best practices in many other jurisdictions up and down the state. We strongly support the changes being proposed to ensure we uh, can move forward civilly. And we urge your I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller is 6598. 6598, please press star six. Good afternoon, Board of Supervisors. Ann Riddle here. I appreciate this opportunity to share a thought or two. I find speaking in public very difficult. And so any type of rules that would change that for me and others uh, requires me to say something, and I'm suggesting some caution as a person who has listened in on almost every Board of Supervisors meeting for maybe decades. I am concerned that we, many of us, uh, participated in Supervisor Anderson and Vargas's meeting regarding recommendations that the public would like to see to make the Board of Supervisors meeting more accessible. They were wonderful recommendations, and if they were in play, I think you would have seen some moderated behavior through the last couple of weeks. And so I'm wondering what happened to that work. It was uh, so many people participated in it. I wonder when people are really out of hand, isn't there a mute button and can't you cut the microphone? Wouldn't that be a wiser thing to do than limit any speakers over 10 of us to one minute? That's hardly enough time to introduce yourself. I also have grave concern about the changes made to the consent calendar and the inability to pull those under the assumption that they're not that important. Many consent calendar items are important and important to people here in our county. They have to do sometimes with money. And maybe at your end, it sounds like it's kind of just a perfunctory decision making. But to those of us whose money it is that's being spent, it isn't. And we want an opportunity to speak to it, to hear your point of view, and to take a vote on it separately, not as a, a joint item. I happen to be the matriarch of a large family. And I know that it's difficult to be in large groups and everybody comes together. But you were modeling for me and others a great way to handle the very difficult behavior. And I hate to see you change your, your way of handling Thank you. it. Thank you. Next caller is 5868. 5868. Please press star six. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. Okay, my name is Karen Vogue, and I have never called in to a meeting before, and I don't have any written comments. I hope you can hear my concerns. Uh, first, I would like to say that the comments made by that person, I won't even say gentleman, made last week were absolutely terrible, and his mic should have been muted. Um, I want to say that I would ask the board, do not let a bad apple um, encourage you to reduce the rights of the people that have come to discuss their concerns with you about what's going on in this case. I have looked at the um, revised um, meetings rules here, and it looks like 
the uh, time that people are allowed to speak has been reduced. And I would say don't let somebody who was absolutely rude and racist be an excuse to reduce other people's time to speak. Um, item 4A1, where the time to speak is in it, is really not enough time to say what's in their heart or their concern. Again, with items on the consent calendar, uh, it seems like the items are not being allowed just individually. I believe everybody needs a right to uh, talk to their elected officials about what's going on in their community. And I would ask you to allow group presentations, and people need the right, if they are happy, to clap, as long as it doesn't interfere with someone else. I'm speaking, clapping, and expressing uh, someone's emotion is, is something that needs to be heard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next caller is 5952. 5952. Please press star six. All right. Hey there. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, this is Cynthia. Um, I want to correct the very beginning of this um, talk where you did mention, Andrew, as far as like the number of e-comments. They're probably around 80, almost 80. 90 percent of them are in opposition. So I, I do want to correct that. Number two, um, I was there live that day. And uh, you know what? I was disgusted with that comment. And I, I echo everyone's sentiment about not doing the broad brush thing. I feel like you guys are just running with this. I mean, you're all loving it. Racist, racist, racist. I mean, you guys are you're kind of enjoying it. And I'm almost kind of wondering if this guy was a paid plant to get this emotion. It's all emotion right now. While the majority of San Diegans are in opposition to your policies, that's where the anger is coming from. And that's what people are looking at you thinking, you work for us. We tell you what to do. But instead, now you're taking one rogue individual and you're flying with it and canceling out every a cancel culture. You guys are all about that. So all I'm saying is, of course, I'm in opposition of this. I've been to many of these meetings. I've been kind and respectful. I don't agree with any of the policies. I'm not going to haul off insults, but I don't want to be put in that in that same pot with someone like that. I'm very, very upset about that. And San Diegans just want their voice heard without the name calling on both sides. That's all I need to say. Thanks. Thank you. Recalling 5011. 5011. Please press star six to unmute. Uh, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Please proceed. Oh, hi there. Hey, uh, my name is John Elliott. I've been a member of uh, of a East County uh, planning group for 30, over 30 years. I've been to dozens and dozens of board of supervisors hearings and uh, planning commissions, et cetera. And, you know, I'll tell you, of all the hearings I've been to, I've never heard a guy talk like he did on that one uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, just letting this one, trying to change our whole process on how the public gets to speak on these meetings is just wrong. The... Um, uh, the consent calendar item where you were restricted on what can be pulled on consent. I mean, all the board has to do is just all kind of secretly agree what they're going to do, put it on consent. And if the board members don't pull that item, it'll never be discussed. It'll never be heard. The public never will have a right to discuss this in public. And uh, I think that's a very, very suppression of, of our rights to speak. Um, you know, uh, 50, 60 years ago, uh, if you would have started talking about giving the rights of uh, blacks people to be to live unsegregated, to be discriminated against, you know, that would have been considered hate speech, hate speech. If, uh, if gay people would have you would have demanded their right to be married. Well, you know, that you've been classified as, as uh, being perverse and that would have been hate speech and you would not have been allowed to talk that way. But was hate speech then is not hate speech now. And what could be classified uh, today is just, it's just wrong. Anyways, uh, I, I really strongly oppose what you guys are proposing. If you really want to get some good, pub, get some good input, 
put this out to our planning groups, put this out to some of the cities and, and uh, other in, uh, entities in the county. Let's get their input. Let's have a proper public meeting where all these items can be discussed. Thank Anyways, you. thank you. And uh, thank you. Uh, Recalling 4253, 4253. Again, last four digits, 4253, 4253. Trevor not seeing any activity from that caller. That concludes public comment on this item. Thank you. Thank you to, uh, to everyone uh, who, uh, who called in on, on this item. I uh, just clarify a couple of points. Nothing in here automatically limits it to, uh, to one minute. Governing bodies routinely uh, lower the, uh, the amount of time uh, based on the number of speakers. It'll stand at a, at a, at a present two minutes. Um, so uh, we certainly heard, heard that, that, uh, that issue raised, uh, but that is that is not not applicable uh, automatically as we move forward. Again, it'll be based on the number of speakers, and again, consistent with what most other governing bodies do. Uh, with that, let me uh, ask my colleagues if they have any additional comments they wish to make. Uh, we presently have a motion by myself, second by Vice Chair Vargas. I see Supervisor Anderson. Uh, thank you, Chairman Fletcher. So I uh, I put a lot of thought to this, and. Um, what went on last week was um, unacceptable. And, but I represent a lot of unincorporated communities. Those unincorporated communities count on the county to build the roads, provide public safety, both fire and police, and we're their only government. Unlike the cities who we help with uh, other services, we are totally responsible to the unincorporated. So now when we're thinking about Spring Valley, well, Spring Valley is not that far from downtown. People can get there. But when you start going talking about Hakumba, when you talk about Pine Valley, when you talk about uh, other unincorporated mountainous communities, many of these communities don't have a Wi-Fi. They, they don't have the ability, the internet, to actually uh, uh, send us an email or be notified in time to react and for them to drive an hour to get to our meeting to get one minute concerns me greatly because I don't think anybody can say it. One of the things that uh, I'd like for the board to consider as, a, as an amendment is to allow 30 days in print before we vote. And the reason why I say that is the legislature uses it right now because the legislature, our constitution, they understood that we're a huge state and people would take time in order to get to Sacramento to speak. And they wanted to give people ample time to give their influence because they understood the importance of hearing from the people. What I'm worried about is that we're allowing the heckler's voice to force our hand to shut down legitimate input. You see, I know that we send to staff and we say, well, here's 120 days, here's 180 days. We want you to do outreach and come back with a plan. But we give them instruction during that time. And if we heard a good idea, and by the way, I have no monopoly on the best ideas, and that's why I want to hear from everybody all the time, because frequently it improves whatever good thought I had and makes it better. So I would want those folks' input on the outside chance that they're coming come up with something we haven't thought of because we don't live in their community. While I live in the unincorporated area, I don't live in some of the most rural areas. And if they had a better way of us approaching the issue, I'd want them to have input. And I fear that the heckler's veto is going to win the day because it's going to force our hand to stop those that would want to harm our democracy instead of empowering our democracy. So I, I know it's difficult for us to get there. And I looked through most of the things. And, you know, if we had ample time to get everybody's response, I could support this. But without that additional time on the front end, there's no way people living in rural communities will be able to participate in the government that they rely on their roads, their health care, their, their public safety. We're important to them, 
were more important to them than any place else in this county because everyone else has their city government providing the roads, providing their, their health care, uh, not health care, excuse me, public safety. These people were their only source. And to exclude them on the front end of the process uh, slaps in the face of what we're trying to accomplish. And look, I get it. We've all witnessed. And when people, uh, I heard many of the speakers say, well, there's not that many threats. There are plenty of threats. I've sat through those meetings. I've heard the threats. There are they're thinly veiled threats. But when you say you're going to get yours, that's a threat. And so I, I don't accept that as an argument. But on the same token, I don't want the heckler's veto to force our hand. And by the way, uh, none of our staff should have to go through any of that. You, you know, I said this that day when I spoke on behalf of uh, Dr. Wooten and uh, speaking to her defense. I signed up for this. I ran for office, and, and I get that people are angry with the things that I do, and I accept that. Staff is just trying to do a good job. They didn't sign up to be beat up. Uh, and so I want to do everything we can to protect our staff but I don't want the heckler's veto to win the day and to force us to exclude people from giving comment at the beginning when they would have the most impact. So is it possible for us to amend this to include 30 days in print on our board letters before uh, we vote so that people would have that window of opportunity? And look, I'm trying hard to get there with the other things, but to exclude rural opinions I, I represent everybody in my district, not just city folk, but unincorporated folk too. Supervisor, what, what I heard you say was to align with the, how the legislature does it in Sacramento, right? The legislature uh, puts it in print uh, enough time for folks to comment. Is that is that right? Well, you do. I mean, you know that they give 30 days. No, they don't give, give notice, days, Supervisor. and then there's nobody knows about it. No, Supervisor, they, they give three days. It's 72 hours in print. Uh, is what the legislature does. It has to be introduced and publicly. Well, they're wrong too. Then. <laughs> well, I know, but they, they, you know they, what? When I was they, there, it was thirty days in print. They made uh, the rules it after it I left. You know that it's place okay. went crazy so after I left. The uh, the look here's we we have board meetings every two weeks, and so like what and we docket it and it's publicly available the week before the board meeting. Uh, but if you did thirty days, people would get confused over what meeting. I mean, you'd literally have a meeting. And you would be publicly sharing things that would be like four meetings uh, later. And so I'm, I'm happy to work with you on this. So obvi obviously, nothing in what we're well, doing today impacts what we do now as it relates to, to when the dockets or agendas come out. Um, but, you know, if there's some way we can do it better, I mean, a, a, a board letter 30 days in print before, given it's got to go through council and everything else, would would be quite a burden. And I and I think it would it would render us, you know, be, be, be a real challenge here. But but I hear you on one, get folks the info a little bit sooner. And I, and I think that that's certainly something I'm, I'm willing to work on. We're already better than the state is. The state is 72 hours in print. Uh, we put stuff up five days before for our standard meetings. I, I, Nathan, I would submit to you that the state goes through committees. The state has more than one bite at the apple. Nothing gets so. introduced and goes straight to the governor. So it goes through two houses. If it gets amended in the opposite house, it has to come back. There, there's lots of public input along the way. So maybe it's a wrong example in the 30 days. When I was elected, it was 30 days in print. Now, the, the other aspect is these rural communities, we don't have, they, they can't even have a planning group meeting because they don't have Wi-Fi. So they couldn't even participate during COVID. There's no way they're gonna drive an hour down for one minute, and there's no way they can produce a letter in time to have influence. So what I'm trying to do is say, either we give them Wi-Fi and allow them to be part of our democracy, or we allow the mail to arrive. So even if we were able to push that back for three weeks so that the postal service could get their information to us, I just, look, it's not right when a minority is carved out of the process and they deserve a seat at the table. It's equally not right when people who rely on our roads and our, our public safety are carved out of the process in their determination. And I just don't wanna see them left behind because a handful of, of um, uh, hecklers are winning the day.
I understand. No, and, and look, I think we're, we're devoting money to Wi-Fi. There's more coming. We got to work on that. And I think the other thing is there, there's not an automatic one minute. It, it's just giving the ability uh, to reduce it to no less than one minute. Uh, but, you know, I think in standard operating and standard times, it'll, it'll, it'll remain where it is. Um, so I, I don't know how a big impact. I think your point on Wi-Fi is, is very valid and very real. Uh, and we want to engage and, and try and help folks do that. And we're all committed to working with you and your district to uh, to try and do that. And and if there's something, you know, we can come up with on a little more public notice, I'm, I'm certainly I'm certainly up and, for and that. But let me just say, it would render us and, inoperable. Yeah, let me just say, you've been extremely generous. I thank all my colleagues for their hard work of helping me with Wi-Fi. I, I am not uh, I am not uh, ungrateful. I'm very grateful to uh, all the work that we've been able to share and work together to, to improve the quality of life for the people that live in the rural areas. So um, I'm gonna have difficulty voting for this until that objection is addressed. So is this gonna go to staff to come back with a policy or is this policy immediately gonna go into action? Yeah, this is just, it's our rules and procedures that we we uh, we adopt to uh, to govern. It's something at any future board meeting, you know, if folks have different ideas on how to do it, we can dock it and, and consider changes. So, you know, what we do today will go into effect for our next board meeting, but as, as new ideas come up, and, and we've heard from some community groups that may have some concerns or things that they want tweaked, and we'll certainly work with them, and, and we have all the opportunity in the world uh, as we move forward to see how it's implemented, see how it feels, see how it's working, uh, and uh, and come back and make, make changes at any point. I... Um... I'm not going to be able to support it today for the very fears that I've stated, but no way do I condone the action that's been taken in our board. No way do I condone. And I'm going to go in this while voting against it with an open mind to see how it goes. Wonderful. And you know what? If it's successful and, I, and, and it's helpful, I, and I hope and pray it is because I, you know, I want us to move forward and I want us to be able to do the people's business and I want the people to be heard. But uh, this was a tough, tough vote for me because I can't abandon those who who rely on us so desperately uh, and abandon their input. And so for that reason, I won't be supporting it today. However, I do not condone anything that's come up thus far. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Austin Reamer. Thank you. Um, no, I just really wanted to, uh, to acknowledge and appreciate uh, your comments there, Chair Fletcher. Um, that, you know, acknowledging that this is one step forward today, because uh, we have, an, uh, frankly, a, an emergency, um, but that, you know, it's a policy that can evolve and um, that we are going to be and remain open to stakeholder feedback and input um, to improve these rules as, as we move forward. And um, if things are not working or if people have concerns in the future, you know, at any board meeting, um, you know, we could, we could look at changing them. And, um, you know, I... I think I'm very hopeful um, in this direction. I think it's the right direction, um, but I also acknowledge that you know it'll be iterative, and we might um, you know get feedback that that can continue to improve our ability to create a safe space that actually protects our ability to have a real public forum that doesn't um, empower bullies and hate because that's what we've done um, inadvertently. And so, um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to uplift that and, and uh, proud to be supportive today. So thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Vargas. Thank you, Chair Fletcher, for your comments. Uh, the only last thing I would add and encourage my colleagues who have recommendations, um, as your representative from CSAC, I'm working on a subcommittee that's addressing um, transparency and opportunities for uh, to have, um, you know, uh, discourse in our communities and to make sure that more people are participating in civil discourse. So any recommendations you have, feel free to share them with me, and I'm happy to make sure that we move forward. But with that, I'm ready to vote. All right. We got a motion by myself, seconded by Vice Chair Vargas. I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you. Supervisor Anderson. Sadly, no. Supervisor Lawson-Reamer. Aye. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas, aye. Chair Fletcher? Fletcher, aye. That motion passes with Supervisor Anderson voting no. All other supervisors who are present voting aye. With that, we stand adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank the next you. regular meeting of the board will take place on Tuesday, November 16, 2021 at 9 a.m. Thank you.